Hello everyone, my name is Mike and this is the board Cyborg. I think I might have a problem, <laughs> but I can explain. Welcome back to yet another episode. Now I know I, I'm very confined here, I feel claustrophobic, but I wanted to show you guys my, how do I put this, collection of movies that I'm saving up so that I could sell off to upgrade. Does that sound insane? Maybe it is. Now, I'm going to clean the table off and go through these one by one and sort of explain what this all means. I know I just said it, but I'm going to explain sort of my, uh, how I go about upgrading to, uh, to Blu-rays and 4Ks, whatever, with DVDs. So I'm going to clean the table off real quick. All right. So what I've been doing over the last year or so is when I find a DVD that's out of print or hard to find, I put them to the side and sort of save them up, literally, so that when I want to upgrade to the Blu-ray, I could do so by selling off my DVDs. Now, some of these DVDs aren't worth quite as much as the Blu-ray, maybe half of the Blu-ray. Some of them might be even worth more than the Blu-ray. Now, there are even a couple in here that I'm holding on to because I think it's sort of an investment sort of thing. I think they're going to go up in price. And there's a specific reason why I think that and why I'm doing it for a particular film. I'll get to those in a moment. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of show you guys, I have three DVDs here that I only have one of. Every other DVD here I have at least two of. So two, three, some of them four, again, that I'm sort of hoarding so that I could sell them off all at the same time to fund the Blu-ray and make a little bit of extra money. A lot of these are going up in price too. I'll talk about some of the ones that are. Now this is an example of a movie that I would need two or three of that I would buy for 50 cents to a dollar to upgrade to the Blu-ray, which is probably 15 or 20. So I know it's a lot of numbers, a lot of math, things like that, but that's sort of the way I do things. And I keep track of all this so that I'm always up. I'm always on the up. Sometimes I don't mind spending a little bit of extra money for the Blu-ray. That's fine. But I know I'll come across another copy of Scanners, sell both of these off and make around $15 profit. Uh, we'll say we'll say 13 since they're probably going to be a dollar each in the thrift stores I buy them at. 13 and then spend a few bucks for the Blu-ray. That's how I do this. So that is Scanners. The next one up here is uh, Fantastic Planet. This is, has a Criterion Blu-ray which runs around 25, 30 bucks. This is probably around 15. So holding on to it so that when I have the money to upgrade or if I find another Fantastic Planet, then I could sell them both off, upgrade to that Criterion. Let me know if you think this is insane, by the way. <laughs> I, I was contemplating doing this video. I'm like, people are going to think I am a, a hoarder. Um, and obviously, I have a huge collection, but I don't consider myself a hoarder. Maybe it's one of those denial things, but my home is, is clean, you know? <laughs> I don't just stick things anywhere. I have shelves. I hand-build shelves. I have a closet that has a lot of storage space. So that's kind of the way I do things. And I am a little crazy. Don't get me wrong. But Summer of 84 is another one that's on Blu-ray that I enjoyed from a few years back. This is a hard-to-find DVD already, so I know it's going to go up in price. And it's sealed. Sealed, always sealed, guys. So let's say a movie's going for 8 bucks, 9 $10, and it's out of print. Sealed copies of that are going to go for double, sometimes even more than double, sometimes triple, sometimes quadruple. It gets crazy. So I know I'll be able to sell this off and fund the Blu-ray if there is a Blu-ray. I remember looking, and I'm pretty sure there is like a... Canadian Blu-ray or uh, English Blu-ray, England Blu-ray, something like that. So either way, that is Summer of 84. I'm going to go through these relatively quickly because I'm not really here to talk about the movies. Philadelphia Experiment. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, this one does have a Blu-ray. I'm pretty confident all of these have Blu-rays. Correct me if I'm wrong. Philadelphia Experiment, same thing. I could sell these off for a bit and upgrade to the Blu-ray. It's just a matter of when I have the time to get this stuff up and I have the expendable income just in case I need to spend a few bucks. Bronx Tale, one of my favorite uh, sort of gangster dramas from the 90s. I love this movie, directed by Robert De Niro, uh, directorial debut. And this one does have a Blu-ray as well. I don't think it, they have. A, there's a Blu-ray in this country. Maybe, has Shout Select put it out? No, I, I, th I don't think, yeah, I think it's a Region B Blu-ray. Either way, I need to upgrade to that soon because I want to rewatch this. It's been too long. This is a Blu-ray that's gotten so out of hand. It goes for upwards to 60 to 80 bucks now, which is just crazy. Disturbing Behavior. Now, I have two copies of Disturbing Behavior. Each could fetch at least, I'd say, after all said and done, $12 profit. 
So I, I'm gonna need a few more, a few more bucks and in expendable income to really upgrade this, unless it gets a new print run or something. But I'm holding on to them. And again, I have these in the collection, so if I want to watch them, I have to watch them. Then they're at least in the collection. They're, they're just sort of to the side. You know what I mean? Next up is the Boibs. I gotta say it that way. Forgive me. The Boibs. Uh, again. Looking forward to upgrading to the Shout Select Blu-ray on these, but these aren't really worth too much. So we've got Coffee, which has a Blu-ray Black Exploitation Pam Greer action movie here from '73. This one, uh, Jack Hill directed, guy who did Spider Baby, and uh, I believe he also did Foxy Brown, if I'm not mistaken. But that is Coffee. Got to upgrade this one at some point. But again, these aren't going for too too much. Same thing with Death Becomes Her. I know there's a Shout Select now. I have a sealed copy, which will fetch a good a good buck, and a used copy, which will probably not fetch too much. But Shout Select put this out. Really need this. This is a film from my childhood that messed me up as a kid. I talked about it in a video I did called um, Non-Horror Movies That Scared Me As a Child. So check that out if you want to hear me talk about Death Becomes Her and what freaked me out so much. Next up, we have Ravenous, which is one that I haven't seen in years and years. Very good film, I remember. Um, it's horror, it's western, it's cannibal stuff. It's really cool. And uh, there is a Blu-ray out there now. Not sure who puts it out. Let me know if you guys know. Uh, but Ravenous is one. Definitely need to upgrade. This one I found out recently from a subscriber that um, Harold and Maud on Criterion is out of print. I haven't verified that, but that would suck if that's the case because I was saving these up to sell them off. Now... Usually, if the Blu-ray... These are probably out of print, too. Not exactly sure. It's still a relatively popular film culturally, but uh, Harold and Maude is one that I need, to, I need to see. I just need to see the film, at least. It's my sister's favorite film of all time, I believe. Uh, Nicole, what up? She loves the film. Uh, she she always... Every time she visits, she's like, have you seen Harold and Maude yet? I'm like, no. She watches it like a dozen times a year, so I love that. I think that's awesome. So I gotta check out Harold and Maude, but I'd love to upgrade to that Criterion Blu-ray. I don't know what it's going for right now. It could be anywhere from 50 to a frickin' 100, for all I know. All right, so we get these big, bulky ones out of the way here. So we've got a Blu-ray collection of The Omen, which is one of the worst Blu-ray sets I think ever put out, <laughs> especially for horror. It's flimsy, cheap cardboard. Look at that. It's crap. And they also don't include the fourth film, but include the remake with Je Jennifer, Jessica Biel, whatever. The remake sucks. So this was a travesty of a, of, of a Blu-ray set. We were all very disappointed, but it's still, I could still get around 15 bucks for it. Now, the Omen DVD collection goes for probably a bit more than the Blu-ray collection at this point. And who put out the movies on, was it, mm, I believe it was Scream Factory put out the Omen collection. They got the rights and put it out, if I'm not mistaken. So I need to upgrade to the Scream Factory collection, no doubt. I'm pretty confident that has the fourth film. I'm pretty confident it does. So that's the one to have. So that is the Omen. Next up, we have another Blu-ray that is out of print and hard to find. It goes for around 40 bucks or so. Last time I checked. These fetch probably around $7 profit a pop. $6 profit a pop. So I'm getting there. <laughs> But again, I have to balance. If I'm spending $3 each on these DVDs, then it doesn't balance out. But $3 on the movies, maybe even less because I've got these, gotten these at Goodwill. So let's say each one fetches me around $6, $6, $12, $18. Uh, that's the dollar. Yeah, so I, overall, I'll probably have to come out of pocket like 30 bucks, 40 bucks or so. <laughs> and I'm not willing to do that. So I'm either going to wait till Volcano gets another release or I find more of these... <laughs> And do it that way. That's the way to do it, folks. Or not. Seventh sign. This is another one that's not a very expensive Blu-ray. I could easily sell these off to fund the Blu-ray from Kino, I believe, put it out. Seventh sign is a really underrated Rosemary's Baby-esque sort of satanic cult that involves um, a pregnant woman. And it was very influential to me when I watched it as a, uh, as a late teen. I actually saw it before Rosemary's Baby. And one of my stories that I'm just calling Baby right now is definitely inspired by this and Rosemary's Baby, but it's it adds like Lovecraftian stuff and a lot of weird shit. So um, I was very inspired by The Seventh Seal. I definitely need to watch it again. Underrated movie directed by Carl Schultz with Demi Moore, a young Demi Moore. This one's been in and out of print over the years, and I'm confused as to the state of where that's at. Uh, but Willow, I need to sell these off to upgrade to the Blu-ray. I once owned the Blu-ray, but sold it off when it was going for like 40 bucks when I needed the money. And I didn't want to do that, but I had to. And Willow, I've got 
three DVDs worth here, one sealed, so there you go. We've got Brewster's Millions, which got a Shout Select release, Shout Factory Select release, I think two years ago, last year or something. Doesn't go for too much, 10, 15 bucks or so, so I could easily sell these off to upgrade to that one at some point. It's interesting how many of these are Shout Select films, right? And last but not least, this is the most uh, interesting of the cases, I'd say, because a Blu-ray exists for these move for this film, but it's a Japanese or Chinese release, I want to say, and it goes for over a hundred dollars easily. So, Exiled, one of my favorite gangster movies of all time. Absolutely love this Hong Kong fucking classic that nobody talks about. One of them is open. This is my copy for years from years ago. And then three of them are sealed that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now, I get it. You know, Dollar Tree is overstock stuff that nobody really wants. But Exiled is a film that has a fan base. And usually when things land in the backs, the overstock, um, well, not usually. But I, I would imagine that Exiled is going to go out of print on DVD. And it's going to shoot up in price at some point, which will help me fund a Blu-ray. Hopefully there will be a Blu-ray, a new Blu-ray released at by that time. But again, if I want to watch the film, I've got it right here. So I'm just hoarding these and waiting for a time that they appreciate so that I could sell them off, make some money, and get a the Blu-ray that Exiled deserves. So that is the probably the most unique case out of all these. But I wanted to come in here and show you guys just sort of uh, some behind the scenes of how I collect uh, more economically, more financially than my previous video. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. That's going to do it, guys. I'd love to know if you have any weird, quirky things you do that um, help you collect on a budget better or help you just help you be more frugal, things like that, more aware of the market, things like that. So I'd love to know what you guys do. If there's any idiosyncrasies or quirks that you guys have, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. We'll get a little discussion roll. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications. I also have a Patreon and t-shirts. Links are in the description below. Any support would be much appreciated, guys. Anyway, I will see you all next time. Board Cyborg is out. My legs hurt. <laughs>